Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Now, it's my privilege today to review one of the Common Law Library books. I've been through most of them over the last two, three decades, and they are all excellent books. The first one I ever came in um, contact with was Chitty on Contracts, and that, I have to say, was from the 1960s, which I'm afraid dates me rather. But what I'm looking at today is a book which um, has come out recently called Goff and Jones uh, on the Law of Unjust uh, Enrichment. It's now in a ninth edition. Um, it's a book which used to be called Restitution. Um, that word has tended to have a bit of a confused meaning for some people, and I think therefore the authors decided to change the wording to Unjust Enrichment. It's now edited by three people, Charles Mitchell, Paul Mitchell and Stephen Watterson. Now, as I've said, it's Sweet and Maxwell Thomson Reuters who are the publishers, and it's part of the Common Law Library. And uh, my wife Elizabeth and I uh, discussed this book in detail. It's a, a superb book, without any question. And we've given it the title for our book review of, of the following, 50 Years On and a Sad Farewell to the Original Authors in this new ninth edition of the definitive text on unjust enrichment. And I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute. This is the book itself. It's a heavy book. There's the spine. You can see it's the Common Law Library. And then the ninth edition, Sweet and Maxwell. There's nothing on the back of any importance. Now, here we have the index. It's a very detailed index at the back. It's done by paragraph numbering, so you can find things very, very quickly. Uh, there's a lot in the index. You can see even right at the back, this is rectification right at the back, one of the later chapters, chapter 40. You can see a lot of footnoting and a paragraph numbering. If I can go to the front of the book, uh, there's a lovely divider, red, for this particular uh, copy. There is the list of the titles in the Common Law series. This is where the law is. There's no question about it. It's the highest level um, intellectually of statements on the law. This is where the law can be found, and this is the actual front page for this book here. These books, I've reviewed every single one of them over the years, and they never fail to impress me. The first edition of this book came out in 1966, as you can see there, there's some detail. Now, this is the dedication, and the reason why I mention this is because Lord Gough was a splendid man, um, a very courteous gentleman, and sadly, both he and Gareth Jones, who's all equally um, impressive, have both passed on. Now, the preface talks a bit about that, and I, there is a tribute, and rightly too, because this is an important book, without any question. And it's sad that both of the original authors have now gone, but um, at least we have the work. And this is the content section here, because there's a lot of information. You can find the information quite quickly. And it runs to the 40 chapters in total, and there's the index at the back. Then you have the table of cases, and lots of lovely cases all the way through. You can see a very large number of cases. Then you have statutes and statutory instruments. And then after that, you have non-UK statutes. That's coming, creeping in very much as a, an area where we do have, because we're becoming more global. We are starting to get more of the non-UK statutes being referred to from other countries. Then we get into the main part. Part one is the introduction. And then you can see here, it starts off with basically a definition. This was starts off with what was, and explains that it was actually originally the law of restitution, and then they changed the title. And then there you see a lot of footnoting, and that runs all the way through. You can see we're here, we're on economic duress, right in the middle there. The total number of pages runs to a over a thousand pages, thousand and fifty odd pages. Now, as I've said before, these books are the prem premier books. You, got, you don't get any better than the Common Law Library, in my opinion. Uh, these are certainly the books that the judiciary and academics and anybody who's involved in any of the works, uh, any of this sort of legal work, will go to these um, these books if you're looking for a particular point to argue or if you need to have some idea of the detail. Uh, I mean, I just even taking the law of contract and chitty on contracts from its original very small book to what it is today, the, the two volumes, 
and the detail involved, that will assist you immensely with some of the very intricate and complex cases that you may may actually come your way in chambers. So therefore this book is of great help when it looks when we're looking at what is called restitution and un unjust enrichment. So what do we say? Well, in 1966, when Robert Goff and Gareth Jones published the first edition of this book, the, the, word un the words unjust enrichment uh, were actually little known and it was a little known and understood concept. Now it's regarded as one of the primary sources of rights and duties in English private law, as the current three editors of this now classic text have pointed out. And I think it's important to bear in mind what we mean by unjust enrichment, as in other words, taking an advantage which you shouldn't have. That's what it really means if you think about it in a very general context, but obviously it's much more detailed than that. This book, they add, has made a seminal contribution to the general and full understanding of unjust enrichment as a distinct area of legal study, and certainly a vital one. Um, and I think that's really important to bear in mind, because I, I do come from an era where we're using different words, and so it's nice to be as up-to-date and contemporary as one can. And quoting from the late and learned judge Alan Roger, references made to Goff and Jones as the Romulus and Remus of the English law of restitution. Out of a few weak and scattered settlements like the beginnings of ancient Rome, they have founded a powerful city whose hegemony now extends far and wide. And that is the case. It's not just about Goff and Jones and the book, though. It's, it's the way, in fact, in which the, the legal principles have evolved, if I may be so bold as to say that over, say, um, 30 years or so. In fact, it's more than that, looking at the actual... Um, dates, because we're, we're talking here of 50 years since 1966, and we're now in 2017, but you can see the changes that have occurred certainly in the last 10 years alone. And it's not difficult here to account for the fact that the law of unjust enrichment has now gone through nine editions, of which this is the latest. As I say, it's published recently by Sweet and Maxwell uh, for their common law library under the editorship now of uh, Charles Mitchell, Paul Mitchell and Stephen Watterson. And this edition emerges under a cloud of sadness, as I've said before, as both Robert Goff and uh, Gareth Jones both died in 2016, and it's dedicated to their memory. And I'm sure we will, those of you who met the gentleman will know, as I, as I do, how um, that we, we owe a great deal to them for producing this excellent work. Um, and I'm glad that they've, they've dedicated this edition to them. Fortunately for hard-pressed practitioners, this volume of over a thousand pages is easy to use and distinguished by erudition, authority and clarity of expression. And I have found that's the case with all of the common law library uh, publications. Sometimes you look at them with a bit of awe and think, oof, it's a bit difficult. But once you get to use them, it's like the white book, you can find your way around and you can see the benefits that they offer. The introduction in this book is particularly useful in that it explains the basic concepts pertaining to unjust enrichment, especially those that distinguish it from restitution, notwithstanding that a preference seems to have developed for the, the use of the term unjust enrichment over the term restitution. In other words, returning to where we were. Now, you can see the concepts, but I think the words probably um, mean a bit more. Now, as the new editors point out, the title of the book reflects the fact that unjust enrichment is a discrete source of rights and obligations that ranks alongside contract and civil wrongs in importance and calls for standalone treatment. And the book certainly delivers thorough and extensive coverage of the subject, rendering its complexities and subtleties uh, satisfyingly accessible. The book's seven-part structure deals first with such matters as the general principles of enrichment, followed by uh, justifying grounds, and further by the specifics of enrichment itself. And I think that's important because actually the word enrichment is probably a more powerful word to use than restitution, which doesn't really seem to get at what these, some of these people have been up to, if I can put it that way. But I, as I say, I think it's explained extremely well. Particularly interesting, we thought, is part, part five, which examines grounds for restitution, including, for example, the following, the vitiating factors, mistake, duress, 
frustrated contracts, ultra virus beyond the powers, mental incapacity and illegality. So all the usual favourites are there. And then parts um, six and seven cover defences and remedies. Always important, especially for the academic lawyer and anybody doing exams at either a bachelor or a master's level. I think you'll find those areas very useful uh, for any papers you might be writing. Um, I actually will continue that suggestion because the academic side, I think, is also very useful because the research resources in this volume are available in abundance, including 125 pages of cases, statutes, SIs and non-UK statutes. Now, it's not just for the practitioner, it's also for the, certainly for the scholar, and I do believe this is a very high level of scholastic work, apart from the value to the practitioner. And the hegemony of unjust enrichment has extended far and wide indeed. So navigation, however, has been rendered relatively easily as well via the book's detailed table of contents, so you should be able to find things quickly. There's a very comprehensive index by paragraph numbering, uh, and of course the numbered paragraphs throughout do make it uh, easy for you to find your way quickly. Uh, I'm afraid I don't go down the route of using CDs or ebooks because I've found I need to cross refer to a number of different pages, hence the use of having something like the nice little divider uh, ribbon, which is very helpful with a number of the Sweet and Maxwell books. And I happen to know that certainly when I've been in court, it, it really is easier to have the book, frankly, sometimes than to have all of the computer stuff. But perhaps I'm getting a bit old, I don't know. This is a great book, though. Let me conclude by saying for practitioners and the judiciary, this distinguished work of reference with its wealth of new material is an essential acquisition. And I think any major law firm or set, Chambers, will should have the complete set of the Common Law Library. And up to, as up to date as you can be. It's not cheap, but you do need to have it. And the publication date is cited at 20... Um, 16 September 2016. Now, just looking at it again, I'm just going to open it in the middle. We are looking here, duress, always an interesting area. It's amazing how many clients come up with the words, uh, the word duress or the word mistake, which actually is, is preceding it, the quality of the mistake and so on. As I said, there's a lot of learning here. You see the paragraph numbering there and obviously footnoting. There's a huge amount of learning that's gone into this. And I think we should be very grateful to everybody associated with these works because they do make our lives so much easier. And it's a big thank you, of course, to the authors and all the people involved and to Sweden Maxwell for continuing to produce this excellent library for us. Thank you. Bye bye.